Yo, what is going on, guys? I'm back with the top eight from uh top eight VOD review from Madison Regionals. So we've got Zach Taylor uh, with the alternate Cosma and Jake. Um, call him Jake E. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Uh, Jake E with Greninja. Um, now Zach is playing the Tina promo, um, but unlike a lot of decks, that doesn't auto win the matchup um, for. Uh, it does not auto win the matchup for um, <clears throat> Alternate Crossmark the way it does with some other decks. Ha just including the Tina promo just gives you the win against Greninja. That doesn't quite work uh, for Alternate Crossmark because they don't really have a, any super efficient attackers into Greninja. I mean, Alternate Crossmark uh, for two Psychic, this card does 100 and. Uh, oh, just 180, actually. Uh, but then you lose the energy. Um, and Ninja will just sit there and shadow stitch you. Uh, actually, something interesting from Jake is we see he still is running the uh, the bubble Frokies. Maybe he likes the uh, uh, the bubble a little bit better than the um, <clears throat> I don't even know what the other one has for an attack. I don't think it's very good. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we can see the two energy discard one shot with the um, what's it called uh, alternate Krasma, but he doesn't want to run out of energy um, because if Jake just keeps shadow stitching him. Um, he will actually just run out of energy. Uh, see the duplicates from Jake. Uh, now this one might be a little boring. I thought I would still go through it because it is a top cut match. Um, but this one might be a little, a little bit boring. There's not going to be a whole lot going on back and forth. Um, I think the the only thing we can really see, um, uh, the only potential for misplace here is going to probably be on Zach's side. Um, he has to make sure he doesn't like overextend his energy because that's really how he will lose this. Match ideally, he wants to be attacking with like Dawn Wings turn two and draw the first two to three prizes. Um, we see he does not have that set up or that going at all. Um, he's gonna get two psychics here. Um, yeah, he does not have the Dawn Wings set up at all. I mean, if he can stick more of these two away, I think he already has a psychic in the discard pile, so I don't know if he wants to grab two. That's another thing you don't want to overextend your energy into the discard pile. Jake's strategy is still going to be pretty much the shadow stitching every single turn, um, <clears throat> and just chill and shadow stitching. Um, so that means for for uh, for Zach, um, excuse, excuse me if you hear the, the lawnmower in the background, um, that means for Zach, it is potential to run out of energy. So you don't want to overextend your energy into the discard pile uh, because then they could get stuck there. You want to try and utilize every single energy uh, possible. Um, so ooh, another flow stone would have left. Uh, that should be fine, right? Yeah. I think we're going to see Sycamore. Ooh, all of his flowstones are gone now. I'm pretty sure he only runs the three flowstones. So it's unfortunate for him to lose all of his flowstones right here. Um, I don't know if Jake plays Field Blower, but if he does, he can now abuse the fact that uh, Zach is out of floatstones. All right, so we see uh, he was hoping for the double Malamar here, but now see, now it looks like his hand is dead. Um, so then he, he will be wasting one energy potentially here because he has two Psychics in his discard pile. Um, so he's just going to go for the Tina promo. Interesting. Interesting to go for Tina promo over there. He doesn't need the Tina promo yet. And he has no supporter in his hand. So I don't like this play. So even though Tina promo is big to get, he has one more turn to find Tina promo. Potentially two. Um, sometimes when even, like Jake needs to get a lot. He needs to get the, the Greninja this turn, the Breaks next turn. Still be able to attack and have energy to um, put out there. Um uh, with the giant water shuken, so you don't need you maybe pinch, you don't need Tina for two turns, definitely don't need it this turn, could get it next turn, and now his hand is actually just dead. Um, so I don't quite understand getting Tina here over Lele. Oh no, he discarded both Lele's on turn one, he actually doesn't have a choice, that's right. Um, and, okay, so but going back to the professor's letter where he grabbed two psychic, attach one, discard one, I'm almost positive he has an extra psychic in his discard pile. Um, choice man there will just have to be fine, I think. Um, that's right. He he did both Lele certain ones, so not getting Lele here is fine. Getting Tina promo is probably the the best thing to grab here. Um, I was gonna say so now he just has well he's gonna have this extra psychic as well from this. Um, uh, but now he has a, a, a because he didn't get two Malamar. He has a, a psychic that just did not get utilized at all. So he utilized this psychic that is now gonna be trapped in the discard pile because um, he got to attack with it and get a knockout. So he utilized the energy, um, but he did not utilize. Um, that second that second psychic he got off the professor's letter because turn one I'm almost positive he discarded the psychic energy. Uh, what are eight twenty five? I'm not gonna go back and check. So I didn't really like the second psychic off the professor's letter. Sure, it's possible he grabs or gets the second Malamar on this turn, but he doesn't know that for sure. Um, and you can take this game slow, you, especially with all these floatstones in play. You can do a lot of plays like just retreat to a Malamar for a turn, and then Jake has to shadow stitching it twice 
because he can't really afford to not shadow stitch and give you your Malamar abilities. So like you can do a lot of funky things to try and buy time and just get energy in play. So I don't really like uh, Zach there. Um, have I been saying the names wrong? I don't really like Zach there. I think I've been calling him Jake. I don't really like Zach there. Um, Prof Professor Lightning for two psychics when he already has one to use for well, at least one Malamar. You don't know if you're going to get both Malamar. You want to utilize every single energy in this matchup. And like I said, you have a ton of time. You can do something like he's got all these floatstones, all these Malamars. Okay, the two, there's your gone. You can retreat to this Inke, though. Maybe this Inke becomes a Malamar. Retreat to the Inke. Um, so we see the energy whiff here from Jake, which is really unfortunate. Um, this does force another energy out um, from Zach, but he does get to use the abilities this turn, so it's really not that big of a deal. We should see the treasure um, get rid of... Um, ooh, okay, cool. We should see the treasure get rid of... Uh, the choice band, yeah. <laughs> I want to see another alternate cross, I think. Uh, Malamar's okay, too. There's a higher chance you get the Malamar, though, but you do want to get the energy up. But you really want to see alternate cross here, too. You can actually set up the Tina as well. Um, oh, no, he can set up this. He's going to he's gonna put one here, uh, Invasion, and then put one here. That's fine, actually. This is fine. Um, just doesn't want to burn too much more energy. Uh, like I said, that's kind of the only the thing we're trying to avoid here um, as Zach. Um, actually, this turn, if he has extra Psychic in the discard, he could have just left this active and then you'd gotten all the energy out of the discard pile into play. Um, so basically he could have left this active, the uh, alternate across. So that way he has access to invasion. If we look on Jake's side of the field, um, Jake has no, um, you know, Grenadier doesn't play Guzma. They don't play Floatstone. He has no energy in play. So he can't retreat and shadow stitching, shadow stitching in the same turn. Uh, I don't know if that's just kind of too slow. Um, I think I would have definitely liked to have seen this energy go on the Ultra Necrozma. So he could potentially consider taking a knockout next turn. Um, so I'm not a, I don't have a ton of experience with this matchup. Um, maybe just Dark Flashing, consistently just Dark Flashing over and over again is just the way to win. Um, it doesn't seem terrible to me. It seems pretty good. I think he could have chilled for a turn, especially if he's going for down the Dark Flash route. You're two shotting the brakes, anyways. You give Jake an extra turn, which doesn't feel good, I guess. Um, but it shouldn't make a huge difference because. Uh, he doesn't need to find that much. He only needs to find energy plus breaks. Um, he doesn't even need to find breaks, really. He just needs to find energy. Uh, the break, I guess, protects him from beast energy. Um, Photon Geyser for one energy knockout, a non-break. Um, it's a one of card. Zach's not going to be playing around that. Or Jake's not going to be playing around that too hard, I don't think. Um, like, stressing to find Greninja breaks. Um, so he has energy finally. So we'll be able to, like, stitch for 70. Uh, we see the stretcher. Uh, gets the frog at back. <clears throat> Should be just energy to active stitch. Um, looks like he was debating a choice band attachment. No need to do that. There's actually the choice bands are super important to to make sure you get the extra thirty damage in consistently. Uh, Zach, like Zach, finding field blower to get rid of choice bands is super important as well. I think Zach plays two field blower. There's one. Um, I'm actually not sure why he didn't play that last turn. I think he had it in hand. He definitely should have played it last turn if he had it in hand. The only thing for him to field blower ever is. Uh, choice bands. So I want to go check that actually because he definitely should have um, played that last turn. Okay, there's a second Malamar. There's a Cynthia. We'll just see what he gets off the Cynthia. If he gets the field blower, he definitely should have field blower the choice band. You don't want to play like your opponent's going to misplay and put the second choice band in play. You want to play like they're playing properly, which means you want to play properly and just, just field blower the one choice band. Don't let him get that extra 30 damage hit in for no reason. Uh, yep, there's field blower. So he should have field blowered that for sure. Um, I don't know why he didn't. Second Dawn Wings come down again. I don't know if there's another Psychic in the discard pile. Like I said, it would be... I'm pretty sure there's another Psychic in the discard pile. So if he had just chilled with this active for a turn, um, gets, he gets another uh, uh, Psychic attachment off, which would I think would have been bet the best way to go about it. Like, there's no reason not... Like that's if you, The only way you lose a Zack is if you run out of energy. Um, so just get the extra energy in play. I don't think there was any reason for him to attack this turn if he could have just chilled for a turn. It would be different if Jake had any energy in play, either on his active or attached on the bench, because then he could retreat and shadow stitching, and then you want to be able to do it anyways. But he doesn't. So you know for sure next turn you will be able to uh, Malamar, because there's no way for him to move his active and attack. It's Greninja. They don't play anything like that to give him that um, out. Um, let's see. Uh, go back a bit. Um... Mm-hmm. Uh, KO the active. Oh, here's... I'm coming up a bit now. He's for 70. So, yeah, then he field blowers now. So, he took an extra 30 damage for kind of no reason. Sure, that Jake could have another choice band, but it's another choice band he doesn't have later in the game. So, you just field blower immediately. 
on Sack's last turn for sure. Force him to have the extra the other choice man if he has it. If he doesn't, then he's just not taking the damage for a couple turns. The extra damage. Um, yeah, and it should be good. Zach should be good to just chill for a while here now. Um, is he'd even be fine if he lets Jake go up in prizes because then he can moons eclipse. GX and like knock out a, a fresh break. Um, so he'd be fine at letting Jake go down to like two prizes actually. As long as he gets an attachment every turn or is at least uh, close uh, to being able to attack with whatever he, uh, with something relevant on, on a turn, um, he doesn't really care. Uh, he doesn't care about the draw pass that's going on or draw attached that's going on. Um, uh, <clears throat> as long as he sees energy, he's going to be fine. Um, Evil Soda from Jake. So he's got the Greninja's rolling now. Um, one thing Jake has to be aware of, though, is if he if he retreats too much into other Greninja's, uh, the play that Zach can actually set up is to GX to hit all these for 120, and then once there's six prizes in the game, uh, he can GX with uh, the alternate crossbow to clean everyone up. Uh, so he's going for the 110 knockout here. I'm not sure I'm a big fan of this. Um, I guess it's okay because he's taking away all of uh zach's float stone options which is actually a big deal that uh zach is pretty much out of float stone um so he just goes for the 110 um this is probably a route he has to go down to and the way this game has developed to actually win the game so i don't hate this um and it does get kind of hard for zach because the all of it i think pretty sure all of his float stones are gone um looks like he's gonna get for another alternate crosma makes sense he has Ooh, he does not have that much energy left. He definitely needs to utilize his remaining energy. Yeah, he does not have a ton of energy left. Um, looks like he's not going to take anything. I would have. I think I would have grabbed Ultra Necrozma there. Uh, maybe this is the bench face open. You're probably going to put the energy on this Ultra Necrozma anyways. But yeah, uh, Zach having no uh, float zones left is a big deal here. If he had a float zone in play or was able to save a float zone and go dig for a float zone this turn, um, he could um, you know, a, a knock this out with a double... Uh, psychic recharge onto this guy six um so he's probably gonna have to settle with an invasion 120 it looks like he doesn't have a lot going on in his hand um yeah not even gonna play the professor's letter there's no need to um there we go we're gonna put two on the ultra necrozma for later um try and utilize that once again we're just trying to use our utilize our energy efficiently so we want to use that to ko a fresh ninja get a one shot these can be cleaned up um in other ways we don't have to worry about them. So yeah, this matchup is actually still pretty close, even though there is the Tina promo. Like I said, the Tina promo doesn't lock up this matchup for Ultra Necrozma like it does a lot of other matchups, uh, like 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 it does for a lot of other decks versus Greninja. Um, Ultra Ball from Jake. Probably going to look to set up another Ninja. Yep, there's the Froki. Um, yeah, there's still a lot of room for Ninja to play with in this matchup compared to, like I said, um, other matchups. Um, so we did see that that <clears throat> that 70 damage that he did take because he didn't blow her was actually relevant on his first Dawn Wings being knocked out. He took the 70, and then uh, Jake had second choice man to do 110. Um, though I guess it would have worked out the same anyways, but he wouldn't have been able to send up a fresh ninja, which means he would have got, got to KO a ninja um, and limit his ninjas in play. Uh, and he would be out of choice bands. Instead, he's going to get an extra hit in with this choice band because he didn't feel blower immediately. Um, so if he had feel blower immediately... Jake would only have gotten two choice band hits in. Because he didn't feel blower immediately, Jake is going to get three choice band hits in. Um, that's a, something to note there. Like That's definitely why you just want to immediately feel... The only thing to feel blower in this matchup is choice band. If there's a choice band on the field, you feel blower it. Let's see. I think Jake's just going to go with... He's going to go with the retreat here. Um, if I was him, I think I would have got the choice band hit in now. Um, I'm not... I don't really understand this retreat to here either. He doesn't get to save this ninja. This ninja gets... KO'd, um, same as this one, but now there's a prevent p potential for Zach to field blow your choice band, and then you just don't get to utilize choice band. So he's gonna do 80. That means he's looking to do 110 with this on the following turn. Um, but he's sacrificing this ninja to go get knocked out anyways. So then why wouldn't you just Moonlight Slash with this one for 110 right now and get the energy back? Now there's potential for Zach to draw Field Blower. Yeah, this, this play actually makes no sense from Jake. So Jake is like, okay, he has Splash Energy on this Ninja. So he's like, I want to get this Ninja back eventually. He has the Splash Energy on it. Um, but then if you look, he's like, he sends up a Ninja. Is like, okay, but I'm okay with getting rid of a Ninja this turn. I'm okay with not recovering a Ninja through Splash Energy this turn, which is fine because it sets up for the two shot. So that's cool, right? We get the two shot off. 
Um, but if he's okay with sacrificing a ninja this turn, just send up the one with the choice band and do the 110. Um, because now it's very possible Zach has the field blower, and then you don't two shot this Dawn Wings, which is great for Zach. Um, so if you're okay with losing, it would be the same thing too, right? You would send up this ninja, Moonlight Slash, do the 110. You get the 110 out there. He he can't disrupt the extra damage from the choice band. Just, it just happens. Um, and if you're okay with losing a ninja, you still lose a ninja. You get the splash energy back, so you can attach it to this one next turn potentially. I guess this sets it up so we can put the basic energy on it and then do the 110. Um, but I think you just want to get the KO for sure. If you lose this choice band, um, that's going to be a big deal. You just won't get this two shot. I guess you would pro you would lose both ninjas anyways, I guess. Because um he should have more energy in play, shouldn't he? Because he used to attach every turn and he doesn't and he's been stitching a lot. Hmm. So you lose both energies anyways. Oh, you lose both ninjas anyways. I guess th this way he's doing it, he doesn't lose this ninja, but he has another ninja set up and he can get another ninja going. Yeah, I still like attaching with the choice band one immediately. Um because if if Zach has the field blower, I think you just lose the game. He does need the field blower, so I guess you could bet on him not having field. I would have attacked with this one though. I guess you could bet on him not having field blower, but um, yeah. I mean, actually, I'm gonna actually I'm gonna go back for what do we at? We're at seventeen fifty. I don't want to go back too far. So he attaches here. So if he's deciding to do this play, he could just attach here and then do that. Ultra Ball away, those two. <sighs> he puts a splash here. He could just put the splash here and then Moonlight Slash for that. Then he would lose this one, but it's the same thing. But he gets the ninja back faster. Um, And before getting... Yeah, so I would like to have just seen this. If he's going to commit to this play, just put the splash here and then do the 80. Uh, I, was, I was seeing if he could have put two energy here, but yeah, he Moonlight Slash for this one last turn. So yeah, put the splash energy here and do that is actually better too. Um, I think I would have just attacked with the one with the choice band. Get, make sure you get the choice band attack off, I think. but Because um, it is important. The choice band attack is super important there. Um, but maybe you maybe he would run out of ninja at that point. All right. So we see uh, Jake, once again, gets to use abilities. I'm not sure how many energy he has in the discard pile. It doesn't look like the second field blower. It looks like the second field blower is prize, so that's unfortunate. Um just going to grab a metal, metal to the Ultra Necrozma. Um, and then it looks like an N. Put the choice band somewhere. Yeah, he's out of float, so it doesn't really matter where he puts the choice band. He's not really blocking, shutting off anything. Um, I think he's probably going to retreat. No. I mean, if he gets, if he has a field large index and he hits it, um, I think he just wins the game. Um, that's, so that's ideally what he's looking for. I don't think, I don't think I saw it in the deck, though. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like it. Um, so we could see him retreat and attack with Ultra Necrozma here. Um, he could set up for the spread play still. Um, we're going to see two retreat. Oh, he only has this card one energy here as well, so that's pretty cute. And he has the Guzma in hand. I would actually like to see him. So all he needs from here on out is pretty much Guzma. So I would like to see him Ultra Ball away the Ultra Ball in the end, just in case he gets end next turn, the higher chance of drawn to Guzma. I don't know how thin his deck is, though. Is that only three cards left in his deck already? Uh, if that is, maybe not. Maybe don't do the Ultra Ball play. Um, he he also forgot to psychic recharge again, I think. Right? He had two psychic recharges to use. Um, yeah. So we see one psychic recharge retreat. Yeah, he forgets to psychic recharge here. He definitely should psychic recharge to uh, the dawn wings again. Yeah, he should have psychic recharge again here to the dawn wings. That's actually a pretty big mistake. Um, all right, back over to Jake's turn. Draw. This one's actually pretty close. <clears throat> I don't know how this one's going to swing. I think I still favor, favor Zach, depending on how many Guzma he has left. Because he's added the Float Stone, like I said, so he's going to start to... Uh, looks like his deck is a little bit thicker than three cards. I would have Ultra Balled away the N and the Ultra Ball then. Um, I don't think you need the N at any point to disrupt your opponent. Yeah, so now he has a chance to draw Ultra Ball, Ultra Ball, or N. I think he should just Ultra Ball those away. Especially if he has another Shuffle Draw supported left in his deck so he can prevent himself from decking out. I think that was definitely the way to go about it. Um, all you need is Guzma, really. Because since you're out of Float Stone, like you're... Alternate Cosmos will start to get trapped active, which you want to avoid. Because um, we'll probably see a stitch here from Drake to try and trap this Alternate Cosmos active so he can hit it a couple times, I would imagine. Yeah, so that attachment suggests he's definitely going to stitch. Yep, 60-70. Draw. 
Beast energy, that, that, that. So there's seven prizes left. He would definitely like to do the spread attack here. The uh, GX attack from the uh, Ultra Necrozma. He can attach retreat, knock out the active. That doesn't seem great, though. Um, he can swing for 50, actually, right? Oh, is that just... He can swing for 50, right? Because it's a beast energy. It's 20 plus. Yeah, he can swing for 50 here and knock it out. That's actually huge. That's a big attack here. Uh, yeah, so that's actually very nice from... Uh, from Zach to draw the beast energy there. Uh, pretty convenient. Um, <clears throat> so Jake's definitely not out of it, but he's actually just running out of Greninja's. Okay, there's third choice band. Um, he can't knock out. Clay to 110. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, so now it's at six prizes now, so he can do the spread attack now. Um, I don't know if it's relevant anymore. I would have been relevant if he hadn't been able to evolve to Frogadier. Um, but he can GX now. Okay, there's another Psychic. Um, so I think the GX attack is probably the way he wants to go. He could retreat to... Hmm, hard to tell. I can't see what's in his hand fully. It's metal. Metal. So he could retreat with two metal. Um, we might... So we could see the GX. No, he's just going to retreat and KO the fresh... Fresh attacker. And then he's just going to probably wait to draw Guzma and then knock out with his benched Ultra Necrozma. He has Guzma, so he has game right now. Um, it doesn't look like Jake. I haven't seen an enhanced error from Jake yet, so I don't know if he plays it. I uh, maybe missed it early on. There's the end. Uh, but Zach has a ton of time. Like I mentioned, he can just send up like random shenanigan Pokemon and just stall forever. Um, <clears throat> uh, like he can send up malamar to take a couple hits he can send up the tina promo to take a couple hits like he can he can kind of like uh stall forever and right now uh jake has to shadow stitch here um, he can't not shadow stitch um so we saw zach had the guzma in hand so i would have liked to have seen him just pass um you're going from one card to one card so guzma is one of the cards you want so why would you oh he benched the froki actually so now he can gx clean up the froki i didn't even see that i don't know why he benched the froki actually uh, okay, he benched Froki, so actually, yeah, and it's fine, because now you can find the Psychic Energy, or I think he has a Professor's Letter left, um, and then he can just GX attack and uh, win the game. I didn't see the Froki bench, but yeah, with the, with the Froki bench, uh, I like this play better from Zach. Uh, probably not a Psychic Energy. Back over to Jake. Cynthia... Six. Uh, hopefully, there's a Frogadier left. Protect the. Uh, ooh, that's not a Frogadier. He really needs to protect that Froki from the GX attack. It's actually uh, not in a great spot. 40. GX kills Froki. <laughs> He's to read it. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I don't think Jake actually knew fully what the GX attack did. Okay, there was a, there was a second field blower. Last prize. Um, I don't think G, uh, Jake knew fully what the GX attack did. He definitely seemed confused by it uh, winning the game there. Um, so now we should have Jake going first. Um, so we do see the Dawnwing start. Ooh, a Lele start, unfortunately, from Jake. So the Dawnwing start is actually big. And a Flow Stone in hand is big for um, Zach. Um, that's like the ideal starter. Um, you just want to attack with this early. Uh, especially when the Lele start, you can punch it into a Lele once and then clean it up later with the GX from the Ultra Necrozma. Um, you want to like punch the Frogadier early with the with the Dawn Wings. The Dawn Wings, yeah, Dawn Wings is just the ideal, the ideal starter. Um, not a lot going on in Jake's hand. <sighs> he has a Frogadier in hand, but he just goes for the Cynthia because he doesn't have another energy. I like that. You just want to make sure you can get off the duplicates for sure. On Zach's side. Um, he can probably um, get rid of the metal energy there because um, he ideally wants to, wants to attack with Dawnwing. So I'd like to see the Psychic be attached to the active, I think. He could discard the Psychic, but then he has to draw another Psychic. Um, and then has two turns to find two more Psychics, discarding one, Palomar in it, and then drawing one. Um, 
Not sure what that was. Okay, now we do alternate across, so maybe we attach the metal. Yeah, no, he's going right with the psychic. I like this. I think this is the way to go. You have plenty of metal energy. Like, you have the three metal energy and then the beast energy. So you have plenty of time to find those and set up your alternate Cosmos. So um, you still want to try and abuse your early aggression that you can have, which is attack with um, Dawnwings. Dawnwings is the best. It doesn't, like, you don't want to be out here photon geysering um, and losing uh, energy to attack with, um, to, to, to take early knockouts. You just want to attack with Dawnwings and just kind of chill. Uh, another Froakie, Frogadier. He's got a Frogadier in hand, so he definitely wants to probably look to play a supporter or just get another Froakie out. Uh, he didn't get the splash, but getting another Froakie out actually isn't a huge deal. We'll see the end. He's going to try and put it back in. Um, I'm sure Zach's happy to see the end. His hand was not great. Uh, one thing I didn't like from Zach, though, I think I think he had a choice band in his hand, right? We should have seen that attached. Um, let's take a look at the seven again. I maybe even would have would have hated to see. Yeah, so he's got a choice band in hand. So I would have attached the choice band to the NK, uh, basically because you never want to float the NK. Um, we haven't seen counter catcher from Jake yet. I don't think he plays it. There's plenty of ultra ball fodder in the hand. I would have attached a choice band um, there from um, Zach. You just don't want to draw it again. It doesn't do anything in the matchup, really. I mean, he has a lele out there, but like if you punch it this next turn, uh, or if you punch it ever, or just try and get the two energy one shot with the. Uh, Alternate cross, but it's never it's never that big of a deal. Um, the uh, the choice band, yeah, I would have uh, liked to have seen him get rid of the choice band there, definitely. All right, the whole squad showed up this time for uh, for Jake. That's good. Um, almost had to skimp on one, but he he went for the end play, um, which is usually the right play. You don't want to if you have all three, you don't want to find two. Um, Another Guzma top deck is not great there. Uh, that's actually really poor because he does have to Sycamore here. Guzmas are really good in the late game for this matchup. It's kind of like how you can close out the game pretty efficiently as Zach. Uh, so that's actually pretty unfortunate. We do see the treasure for the uh, Malamar, which is important. So we can actually just start attacking. Um, get rid of a Psychic. So I don't like that. Once again, now you're stranding. Unless he has double Malamar in hand, but I don't think so. Oh, he has Ultra Ball, so he's going to get the double. Um, Malamar going... I don't see Tina promo in here, so it's possible Tina promo is actually prized. Um, I also didn't see a supporter in Zach's hand, so is he just going to a supporterless hand? Um, there is a Lele in the deck. We just saw the Lele, unlike last game where he discarded both Lele's turn one. I see, yeah, I see Field Lore Beast Ring, so I don't understand that Ultra Ball. Uh, he could have Ultra Balled away the NK, not the energy, the NK plus the Beast Ring, get a Lele, Lele for a supporter before you get stitched, hold the Field Blower for the Choice Bands, uh, probably get a Cynthia just in case he doesn't put Choice Band in play. That way you save the Field Blower for later to get rid of Choice Bands. And then um, Malamar just wants this turn. Um, and then save the energy in hand for later. So here he just goes to a dead hand. And he has no Tina promo. I think that was maybe the Tina promo. I can't tell. But I don't I don't think that makes much sense from, uh, from Zach. I don't know why he wouldn't. Oh, so there's Enhanced Hammer in Zach, uh, Jake's deck. Uh, that doesn't make much sense from Zach. Why would you put yourself on a dead hand for no reason? He could have all just, yeah, he could have, instead of getting the second Malamar uh, and ditching the energy, I don't know why he ditched the energy because now the energy could get stuck and not utilized at all, which is what you're just trying to avoid. You just want to utilize every energy. I've mentioned this you know, too many times now. Um, i also not a big fan of the uh, Sycamore there over, I mean, he gets everything, but over just maybe the Cynthia. Um, so, oh, he got the Tina Pro. Oh, he top text to Cynthia. Okay, so yeah. So he gets lucky here, but like I really don't like that Ultra Ball to a dead hand. Um, so he got the Tina Pro off the prizes. He has the blower. Uh, he's got the Cynthia now. Just Ultra Ball away the B string. Keep the Psychic Energy in hand. Um, yeah, that's so greedy for no reason from Zach. Just Ultra Ball away the B string. Keep the Psychic Energy in hand. That way you don't need to utilize double Malamar this turn, and you just go one Malamar. You get a Lele for next... Use the Lele this turn. Get a Cynthia for next turn. Just in case he's going to put down Choice Band, you save the Field Blower. Um, and he gets bailed out here with the Cynthia top deck and the Tina promo off the prize. Um, so s unnecessarily greedy play from Zach. Uh, very unnecessary. Um, man. He gets bailed out, though, with the top deck Cynthia. Big time. Big time bailout right there. <clears throat> and he's so far you fully utilized all of his energy. Uh, I think he's going to go with the 
Dawn Wings and another Psychic. But he didn't have that many Psychic left in the deck, so I almost wonder if that should have been put on uh, Alternate Grozma. Uh, back over to Jake. Jake is looking for Choice Band. I'm pretty sure that's the only thing Jake's really looking for here. Uh, field blowing the way the Float Zone is something he could do, but it doesn't seem essential this turn. Um, yep, yeah, well, he's going to go with it. He <gasps> played Float Zone and... and. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, so we see the N... Field blower away flowstone wasn't uh that's probably the only thing you ever field blower in the matchup though, right? Yeah, so field blower flowstone makes sense. There's no reason not to there's no reason to save it. You could try and hit two flowstones, I guess, with it, but um No need to get greedy. Oh, max potion from Jake. Oh, so he plays max potion. That's actually a big deal. Um and we're gonna see the stitch. So this time he goes for the stitch instead of the uh the knockout. Um he probably recovered too many energy. Zach would be able to recover too many energy with the uh, knockout play here. So he's gonna get two psychics here from Zach. Um, so it looks like he plays eight psychic, so he actually has quite a few psychic in the deck. Um, he's probably just gonna look to set the other Dawn Wings. I can't imagine he would do anything else. Um, it's possible actually, yeah. So Jake has a pretty good list for this matchup then. The max potion plus uh, triple choice band, um, is actually very good for this matchup. Uh, he might be able to keep, um, Zach ability locked, uh, for a long time here. So we see the 120, and now ideally, um, you want to see the Guzma knockout on probably the Lele with uh, uh, Dawnwing's GX attack from Zach. I don't know if he has access to the Guzma. He already had to discard two. I don't know if he plays three or four as well. Um, we'll see. Six. Let's see the Starmie. Not a huge deal. Another break. Definitely want to play down as many evolutions as you can. Thin out the deck. There's the Stitch knockout. So that's like a huge knockout. Uh, we'll see if Zach can recover from that, actually. Um, he's thinking about sending Malamar. He's going to go with Malamar. Draw. Float. Oh, well, that would have been a big sheesh right there. Um, ultra Balls away and Ultra Necross. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Both ultra, he's having both Ultra Necross is pretty good. Gets a Lele. Um, but we did just see Jake Stitch. I don't know. If, hopefully, he's not going to try and go back with into it. See, I wouldn't have exposed that you have access to Lele there. Now Jake knows he just wants to stitch no matter what. Um, I'm also not sure about this GX attack. It feels really weak. Uh, he definitely would have liked to have Guzma knocked out Lele or knocked out a fresh Greninja. Um, I guess he gets to buy a turn with this though, which is better than nothing. We'll probably still see a Stitch here come out of Jake. No reason for Jake not to shadow stitching here still. Um, but I feel like this one is definitely probably going to go in the, the favor of Jake. Um, that max potion heal was actually huge. That was a lot of damage to heal off. Um, I think we'll just see a stitch. Um, should do no damage here, um, but they did 40. Uh, he did GX. He flipped over his GX. He could GX last turn, right? Yeah, so he should not be taking the 40 damage here. Uh, okay, they corrected. Cool. Uh, 120, so he gets the extra 120 in. Oof. But still, once again, it's still not looking good for, for Zach. Um, this is the thing where you kind of have to like utilize every single energy um, that you that you can in Zach, because he's just actually going to start to run out of energy here. Once this Dawn Wings go down, goes down, the only thing he's attacking with after that is the Ultra Necrozma, which after it attacks, it discards its energy, because uh, he can't GX with the Ultra Necrozma because he's already GX'd. Um, so now, yeah, now, now Jake's not afraid to just keep switching between the Greninjas, because... Uh, Zach's GX attack is down. There's a field bar on the choice pan. Very nice. Uh, letter. We'll see how many energy he has left. He has one beast energy. That's it. Uh, besides metal energy in his hand, this is what can happen. It's like you just actually just start to run out of energy. Um, another really good GX attack in this matchup is actually um, Tapu Heal. Um, maybe we can see uh, Zach start to utilize the Tapu Heal. So the attachment here to Lele just makes sense. You just need something to attack with. Um, yeah, we definitely want to see, uh, Jake, I think definitely needs to KO this through shadow stitching. I don't think he can afford to ever moonlight slash. He just literally has to stitch it to death. Choice man is useless. Uh, there's the moonlight slash or the, uh, dark flash, uh, hoping to see a choice man here or Jake's hoping to see a choice man for sure. Be able to knock this out one turn sooner. Don't take any extra damage. Any more damage than you need to. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, 
That's what I meant by this one might be a little bit of a boring one. Uh, we see Jake thinking. I think you probably just attach Splash. You could put it to the one that has 120, get that back, and Stitch. You definitely have to Stitch. Um, I don't think you can afford to Moonlight Slash here. Actually, Moonlight Slash wouldn't be terrible, I guess. Um, because right now, it doesn't seem like Zach has a ton of options to attack with. Um, so I don't hate the Moonlight Slash here, actually. It's just, what do you Moonlight? Which one do you Moonlight Slash with? Um, he's thinking. Because uh, Zach already discarded his other Ultra Necrozma. Yep, there's the Moonlight Slash. I don't hate the old other the Moonlight Slash here. Zach already discarded his other Ultra Necrozma. Um, he's kind of running out of attackers on, on Zach's side. He's actually just running out of attackers. Um, I think you probably attack with... Mimikyu? No, you probably have to set up the Ultra Necrozma. So maybe you attack with Ultra Necrozma. It's just kind of getting hard for uh, for Zach to find the the proper attackers here. Um, so that's why the, this is, that's why the Tina promo doesn't exactly win this matchup for um, for the Ultra Necrozma deck because um, uh, it just kind of you just kind of get to these situations. You know, they grind through your Dawn Wings, which are your heavy hitters early on. Um, Jake has like a good list for this matchup. Um, he has the um, Max Potions and uh, Triple Choice Ban. Uh, I said that before. It's like big, uh, big, big cards in this matchup. Um, so I don't know if we'll see a stitch here. <clears throat> Excuse me, from Jake, or if he's going to go with the um, Moonlight Slash. But I assume we'll see a stitch. Um, maybe at this point you just just start slashing. Uh, there's nothing really for Zach to set up on his side of the board. I guess Tina promo getting set up would be pretty annoying. So you probably want to go with Stitch. Um, but Slash does not seem terrible actually. I don't I don't hate him going with Slash here. We'll see what he goes for. So water, yeah, we're gonna go with the Slash. Um, so that's what I mean. Like even though he's even given him access to Malamar at this point, but it doesn't really matter. Um, we'll see if uh Zach actually has any other attackers to set up. Ooh, not really. Just another Lele. I mean, a Lele will do, though. Um, I think for now, he's going to want to tag for N. Um, I don't think I want to see him play N yet. No, I guess he has to. This is the only time he's going to be able to play N. Um, sheesh. This is not looking good for Zach right here. <laughs> he just doesn't have anything to attack with. Um, discarding the other alternate across my early, earlier, I think I mentioned it. I think I didn't like it too much because you just need it. You still need attackers. And as we can see here, he's literally is running out of attackers. Um Two, three. I almost just want to see uh, Zach Scoop to save time, but they have 30 minutes left, so it should be plenty of time. <clears throat> Oof. I would, if I was him, I would have... Oh, he's going for the knockout here. I don't like this. I would save this to knock out a break. Um, I would have just hit with this Lele and hope uh, Jake doesn't have a choice band. I would have just hit with the Lele with the float stone, save this to one shot a break, or his Lele... <clears throat> as your last prize, that's two prizes. Um, yeah, I would have just hit with this Lele again. Hope he doesn't have choice spin. And then um, if he chooses to Moonlight Slash again, you just juice up this Lele and then swing for more, swing harder on that turn. Um, unless he has some plan to take. Yeah, and then he just concedes. Um, so yeah, I would have just hit with that Lele again because I think he still could have won that game if he had hit with the Lele, the damage Lele. And then if Jake does, doesn't have a choice ban that turn, go to your other Lele, start just start hitting. Um, if he gives you more turns of um, Psychic Recharge, you can abuse that. I'm not a big fan of that last play. All right, so game three, um, pretty close games so far. Uh, we got... Tina promo start from Zach. And Jake's going to start with a Froki. All right. Very good start. Very fast, aggressive start. Um, he is going to lose another Guzma here, unfortunately. Uh, for Zach, he's going to lose a Guz. Um, should see him just go grab, yeah, the Dawn Wings. Let's see what you want to set up early. Um, so going first and going second is actually a big deal in this matchup because it usually allows Zach, uh, as the alternate crossman player, to take one more early prize than he would if he goes second. Um, generally, uh, as long as he can draw the psychic energy, um, there's one, he needs to somehow get one in the discard pile and then find another one, um, psychic there. He's got the Cynthia. He's got ultra ball. 
Uh, treasure. He got two treasures, I think. So he's going to treasure for Inke here. He wants to get the double Inke. Um, if he doesn't have another out to Malamar in the hand, I almost would have liked to have seen that saved to find a Malamar. Retreats to Inke. It shouldn't really matter what he retreats to, but I guess Inke is a little bit safer. It doesn't really matter. He should be invasioning in anyways. But if he wants to leave it, something active, it's definitely not. Yeah, keep the Guzma. Get rid of the Sycamore here. Get a Malamar. Uh, and now he needs to Cynthia into Psychic Energy and some way to discard a Psychic Energy. That's really what he wants to see here. He wants to take that early prize, um, start taking the early knockouts. He should be able to rack up two here at the very least. Um, I don't think Jake plays Rare Candy, so he's not going to be able to go to a Greninja next turn. It'll have to be the Frog Adir into the Duplicates. And we see no Psychic Energy. Not even a Metal Energy. <laughs> so that's pretty unfortunate from Zach. And there he goes with the pass. Um, actually, one thing I don't think I understand. Uh, what are we at? 51. I think I just missed this at the beginning of the game. Um, see him flip. Let's see. Let me see his hand. So he has Floatstone. But he Ultra Balls for Dawn Wings here. So you definitely flow some of the Dawn Wings. Okay, that's what I was wanting to see. You, yeah, you, I don't know why he didn't flow some of the Dawn Wings. Um, should have definitely flow some Dawn Wings. Ultra Ball for Dawn Wings. Flow some Dawn Wings. Don't Ultra, ultra Ball. Don't flow some your Tina promo. Tina promo should never be sitting active. Um, all right. Evo Soda from Jake. Um, checking the Frogadier count. Looks like two. It's unfortunate. That's what you get for playing Greninja, though. Duplicates, one, two. All right. It's not a huge deal. Like, the matchup is so slow to the point where prizing a Frogadier isn't a huge deal. And then losing this one early without the splash, you're going to have time to get it back. All right. So, Jake or Zach, for Zach here, he needs to take this next knockout here. Otherwise, the game is going to get. Uh, could start getting out of hand for Zach. Um, he needs to try and take this knockout, though. Okay, so the Beast Energy, not what you want to attach, but it's not the worst thing ever. Uh, Ultra Ball. Once again, he gets rid of the Ultra Necrozma, but he, I think he has the Stretcher still in deck. Yeah, there's the Stretcher. I saw it. Um, I think last game he actually discarded the Stretcher. Um, should get a Malamar here. Oh, he already has a second Malamar. Um, so he's also Ultra Ball thinning his deck. Um, ideally, he wouldn't want to get rid of the Ultra Necrozma there. Float to active Malamar. Still think float is better on Dawn Wings, I think. Um, that way you can move the Dawn Wings whenever you want to, because it's going to be your 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 main attacker. And he whiffs again. He whiffs uh, some way to discard Psychic Energy. He has the Psychic Energy, he just has no way to discard it. Um, so yeah, leaving Malamar active, I think, is the right play. Let it take a hit. Um, he potentially, so he has the third float sort of hand. Hmm. <sighs> So Jake would need exactly field blower plus N to really disrupt this, and you'd have to not find the float stone. Um, that's, that would be very unfortunate for Zach if uh, Jake was to get that. Um, so now at this point in the game, this is where Beast Ring becomes useful in the deck finally because Zach got no early energy acceleration from the Malamars. Um, looks like he got the float stone back again, so just in case he needs it, he has it. <clears throat> um, so, you know, I guess the... No, I guess the Flowstone... Okay, I, I take back what I said. The flow, so this first Flowstone should have definitely been on the Dawn Wings. This Flowstone here on the Malamar is better than the Dawn Wings, though, because you don't know you're going to rush in for sure on this turn. Um, and if you don't, then he stitches, and then you get locked on the bench, the Flowstone. So yeah, no, the, the, the Flowstone on the Malamar makes sense, because just in case you whiff the Psychic Energy. Um, the Flowstone on the, the Tina Promo doesn't make sense, so that should have definitely been on the, uh, the Dawn Wings. Yeah, the Flowstone on the Malamar makes, makes perfect sense, actually. I take that back. Um, yeah, he's just going to come in and start swinging. Um, actually, a huge deal that he got the Beast Energy... Oh, I said that was kind of unfortunate initially. It does feel better. Oh, it feels about the same on the Ultra Necrozma, actually. No, it feels better on the, the Dawn Wings, actually. Yeah, the Beast Energy is definitely just better on the Dawn Wings. I take that back, what I said earlier. I thought I was like... Initially, I was like, oh, I think you want that on the Ultra Necrozma. But actually, you probably just want it on the Ultra Necrozma in any matchup that's not this matchup. In this matchup, you actually get to the one the 130, so you get that KO on the, the Greninja. No, it makes sense here. Uh, or it doesn't make sense here. <clears throat> it's just really good, actually, on the, uh, the Dawn Wings. All right, so we see the Cynthia from Jake. Um, I think ideally from uh, Zach, we want to see a Guzma on the Greninja on the bench if he doesn't find the break. Um, yeah, yeah, the Beast Energy on the Dawn Wings makes sense. Um, three, four, five, six. Or not makes sense. It's fine that he uh, ended up having to put it there. That's what I want to say. <clears throat> because it gets him to that 130 mark. Um, and an Ultra Necrozma, it gets to 130 as well, but you don't want to be discarding energy unless you're knocking out breaks with Ultra Necrozma, ideally. So there's no KO, and he's just going to go with the Stitching for 40. Uh, Zach has a pretty big hand. There we go. So that's what I wanted to see earlier was a Choice Band on something useless. It's basically what you want to do with the Choice Bands. Um, so he could have Guzman up Froakie. 
um, and knocked out Froki. But I think you just want to save the Guzmans for later. Because um, it seems like the way this matchup is breaking down is the ultra car- I'll use the alternate cosmos in the late game, and then they start to get stuck in the active. So that's when you want the uh, goose ones. All right, we see a letter here. That's very good for uh, Zach. Oh, he already has his metal as well, so he doesn't actually need to uh, go find energy. So we're good with just the 150 for the turn. Oof. I think that's a Cynthia. Oh, he's got the max potion. The max potions have been so annoying. Um, we'll probably just see a stitch again. Maybe he'll decide to go away from the stitching here because... Uh, Actually, I don't. I wouldn't have hated to see him Moonlight Slash last turn even, actually, because Zach has no Psychic Energy in his discard pile, which means he needs to find Psychic Energy, put it in the discard pile to actually utilize it um, from the Malamars. Um, so Stitching here isn't as good, I feel like. I feel like I'd be fine to see... Um, I almost want to see Jake do a Moonlight Slash. Even last turn, I would have liked to have seen a Moonlight Slash, I think. Because um, you got kind of kind of got to kind of pick your Moonlight Slash as well of when it's safe and when it's not. And I think it was pretty safe last turn to do a Moonlight Slash. Um, Zach did not uh, not have any Psychic in the discard pile. Um, this turn, he does not have any Psychic in the discard pile. Um, yeah, I would like to see... I would like to see... Oh, now that he has a Choice Band and he's already hit for the 10, I think it, I don't think you Slash this turn, actually. I, I would have liked to see him Slash last turn for sure, I think. Now you just Stitch because you got the Choice Band. Um... There's the blower. That's the response. Uh, his B strings and letter. So I think you letter for energy here, but I almost think you don't attach it. And I think you're going to just B string onto the Necrozma instead. No, you could B string as a follow up, actually. That might be just better. Uh, yeah. So I guess you just still attach one psychic here. Then if you get end, the B strings go back in the deck. But oh well, you can't really do anything about that. Um, it sucks to have to. You're going to hit in this with the. Uh, a Crosma, and then if it gets knocked out, <laughs> excuse me. So yeah, I, I think on Jake's side, you definitely don't want to KO with Moonlight Slash. Oh no, there's Max Potion. Um, on Jake's side, you don't want to KO with Moonlight Slash. You want to Moonlight Slash first, and then KO with Shadow Stitching. Because if you're knocking something out, especially with the Dawn Wings, something with Psychic Energy attached to it. Um, I guess just Dawn Wings, maybe the Leleys with Psychic Energies. Um, if you're knocking that out, it puts the Psychic Energy in the discard pile, which means Malamar can then activate. Um, so I think as Jake, uh, he should have Moonlight Slash. Two, two attacks ago, it should have been a Moonlight Slash. Uh, this turn, it doesn't really matter. Uh, this turn, you want to go with Shadow Stitch, because you want to knock it out with Shadow Stitch. Um, but he could have Moonlight Slashed two turns ago, and then it would have knocked out on this turn with Shadow Stitch instead of, um, a while ago. So I think he goes for the other Dawnwings here. Oh, he's actually just running out, he's running out of energy again. I don't even think the other Dawnwings is in here, actually. I feel like he's gonna bridge it for a top blue light lay. Oh, this feels so bad. Um thinking he's just gonna fail it. I don't hate grabbing top blue light lay there. You know he's gonna stitch knock out your active next turn. Do you even swing in with this Necrozma this turn? Or do you just wait to use Ultra Necrozma to take a prize? Oh, he's gonna float out. Okay, so he has the float actually. So yeah, now you just go with Ultra Necrozma anyways to take a prize. Damn, it's gonna it's gonna be so hard though for uh for Zach from here on out. Um, now, definitely as Jake, you just look to Shadow Stitch for like the rest of the game, I think. I don't even think it's a question anymore. Um, we see the N. It's only draw supporter, sure. Um, yeah, we just definitely are going to see... I mean, we should just see Jake Shadow Stitch for the rest of the game. Just lock him out. I think he still could have Moonlight Slashed two turns ago, or three turns again now. Uh, the first attack he did on the Dawn Wings should have been a Moonlight Slash because there was no Psychic in, Jake's, or in Zach's discard pile. Um, and he's already down to quite a few Ultra Balls and uh, Treasures. And now we should just see Jake Stitch for the rest of the game. And I actually don't know how Zach is going to win this one. I don't think he has enough energy left to win this one. He's going to grab two Psychic here. Uh, he almost needs Jake to take the prize lead so he can he can Twilight. Or was it Moon's Eclipse GX? Um I don't know. This is going to be rough for, for Zach. As long as, I guess Jake has to continue setting up ninjas, though. Right now, he has one Greninja's break and one Froki. Um, so we'll see. He goes with the attach on the. Oof, I don't know about that attack. I mean, it sucks to try and to set that up, but I guess he doesn't really have a choice. Uh, see another stitch. Stitch for the rest of the game. I would almost like to see him bench the NK and set up a third Malamar. Um. It sucks he has not found that stretcher, and now he had, and then he got rid of the other alternate crossman earlier because he definitely would probably prefer to set up the other alternate crossman here. 
Um, bench Lele is probably, yep, we should start setting up Lele. Um, and then this is what I mean about the Tapu Heel being really big, Could can be really big. Um, so if he could have, like, close time retreated, I mean, he doesn't even need a Tapu Heel, the alternate crossbow, but if he could have just Tapu Heel the um, <clears throat> Necrozma, uh, the Dawn Wings, he can still do that, actually. He can Tapu Heel it right here. I think you Tapu Heel here um, and heal your Dawn Wings. But then you don't get to use the Dawn Wings GX, so I don't know. It's it's close. Now he's definitely he's definitely waiting to use the Don Wing GX here. He's sacrificing the Malamar, uh, giving himself three turns. There's no way I think. I mean, Jake could Moonlight Slash next turn um, for the KO. Maybe you probably would have preferred to Moonlight Slash this turn if you're going to Moonlight Slash. No, he should, should he sh so he should stitch here three times. I think we should see stitching here three times from uh, from Jake. And just stitch out this uh, this Malamar. Because if he was going to Moonlight Slash, he should have Moonlight Slashed this turn. Um, Forty. He knows the the uh, Moon's Eclipse is coming. He should retreat to a different. Greninja here. Yep. Save the choice band. Um, there's no other real outcome here. He can actually start setting up a Lele himself. Jake could. Make a massive Lele to use at some point. Um, let's see what Zach top decked. Guzma. Definitely want to take out the choice band, I think. But yeah, Guzma up to one with the choice band. Oh, he's going for the Lele knockout, actually. I don't know if I like this better. Yeah, I guess this is, has to be the way he goes about it, maybe. Um, he can have Guzma again and like knock out the Starmie. And then he says somehow draw one prize. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it, though. Um, I don't know if he's going to be able to find a way to draw one prize. Even though it is just one prize, I don't know if he's going to be able to. I think he's just out of energy at this point. Um, <clears throat> we'll see. We'll see what Zach has left in the tank. No damage, but he does the stitch. All right, so we could see that now we can see the stretcher for Ultra Necrozma. But I'm actually pretty sure he's just out of energy. We'll have to see. He has the Beast Ring in hand, so we could stretch it for Ultra Necrozma with Beast Ring. Um, I think they're checking to see if Stitching shuts off Malamar. It does. Um, the Stitching uh, <clears throat> probably doesn't infect Invasion. I think he could still Invasion, actually. Um, but he's just going to be doing 120 and pass. Uh, two choice bands in play from Jake. I think Zach might be out of blowers, so this is fine. Um, stitch for the knockout. One prize on Jake's side. And I actually have no way, I had no idea how Zach's going to win this one. C and N uh, from Zach. I would have actually, last turn, he should have, if he knows his, his, man, I mean, I don't even know if he has anything left in his deck. Um, <clears throat> we'll see. He somehow needs to draw two prizes. I don't know how it's ever going to happen. On uh on Zach's side. This swing for 80 here, but then he takes 70. 70, yeah. That's why this matchup is still very close, even with the Tina promo on the alternate Cosmo pro uh, even on the alternate Cosmo side, as we've seen. Um There we go. There's another field bar. So I guess I don't like I don't know when Jake attached the second choice band, but I don't like the second choice band attached then. Um if you know he has one field blower left. You should know by now he plays two field blower. Um, so I think he should have just had one choice band in play, not two. We'll see what uh, Zach has left. He could put him to sleep with hypnosis or whatever with the uh, NK. Maybe that's his out here. <laughs> he probably wants to try and do that earlier. So then if, if Jake goes with the Moonlight Slash, he can have the response of... <clears throat> he can have the response of uh, setting up an attacker. <laughs> I don't yeah i don't see how zach ever wins we'll see though we'll see we'll see how this goes um should just see yep a stitch for 40 sycamore uh yeah sycamore for seven um but it doesn't matter there's nothing left in zach's deck that could win him the game um so even with the tina promo we see the alternate cross by falling to the greninja um like i've been saying this at the beginning of the match it's still close even with the tina promo you just 
you have to try and utilize your energy really well. It's just it's still really hard um, for the ultra necrosma player um, to try and keep up with the uh, the Greninja. It's I feel like it's way easier for the psychic version of the deck. Um, they have like the baby attackers like Mew, Mewtwo, or Hoopa. Uh, I can get a lot more value out of the energy, uh, but the ultra necrosma version uh, is not quite does not quite get the same amount of value out of a. Uh, the energy and its attackers as the uh, uh, psychic version. I feel like uh, the best way to go about this matchup for Zach would have been to try and pull off a Tapu heal play. Um, he didn't really ever try and play himself into that. Um, so it would have been interesting if he had tried to play himself into a Tapu heal play. Um, set up like both Dawn Wings, try and conserve your float zone so abuse um, on the Dawn Wings to pull him back and then pull off a Tapu heal play. Um, would have been nice to see that if it had played how it would have played out if he had played for a Tapu heal play. Didn't get to see it this time. Um, so we got Jake moving on to the top four with the Greninja. All right, guys, that's going to do it for top eight uh, Madison Regionals VOD review. I'll be back with top four soon. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was, you know, if you see me make any mistakes or anything, um, someone pointed out a mistake I made in the last video where I questioned why Tarbell benched a extra Pokemon, but he needed the extra damage for right his beating plus Kakui to knock on a baby buzzle. Yeah, always, always feel free to point that out in the comment section below. Um, besides that, uh, have a nice day guys and, uh, peace.